What's up you guys? Welcome back to another Beyond Crazy video. This morning we are doing breakfast. Now Tristan is going to be doing a omelet bar for those people that can have eggs. So I'm gonna be making my special hash and I wanna share it with you guys because it is a delicious recipe and I promise once you guys try it, you're gonna be making it at home as well. You guys have heard me tell this story before but you've never heard me tell the ending of the story. So bear with me. Our first day, so my mom used to make me breakfast every morning. I know I was spoiled in that way and she would come into my room like, what do you want for breakfast? And I'd be like, oh, I want this. And then like, she'd make that for me. Anyways, she didn't have a lot of kids at home so she spoiled me. So when I got married, I truly thought that that's how life was. <laughs> and so the first day that Aaron and I were married, I went to him and I was like, I'd like oatmeal today. And he just looked at me and was like, well, the pans are under the stove. And I instantly just started crying. And I was like, what did I do? Why did I get married? Like, what is this? What is this real life hitting me in the face right now? And I just sat at the table crying, like regretting my life choices. But <laughs> it was a huge growing and learning experience. So I'm glad Aaron said it like that. But fast forward 10 years and Aaron now makes me breakfast almost every morning. So I still got in the end after I grew up and learned. <laughs> so <laughs> he makes the best hash. That's long story short, he makes the best hash and I'm excited for it. You can't let him have everything right away. <laughs> Otherwise they, you know, don't appreciate it. <laughs> I don't know if you heard in the background, but every time we've cooked, we always forget one ingredient. Like, <laughs> so we always send Max back to the store for that one ingredient. Max, would you please? What did what he miss? Oh, right. oh, you miss How did you miss an ingredient again? <laughs> we need to talk to Tristan about his list making yeah. abilities because literally he's, he's great at lists, but we always seem to forget something on him. The first uh, video that we filmed for Beyond Crazy, literally we went back to the store, what was it, four times in one day to get different things. Yeah, <laughs> we're working on it. All right, with that said, I'm on this side of the counter. Tristan's on that side of the counter, except for, you know, he's cutting bacon on my side. <laughs> All right, so we are doing an omelet bar, or Tristan is doing an omelet bar, and it looks like we have onion, we have some veggie, or uh, some fruits, rather. We got some avocado, tomato, and bell peppers. Oh, we also have some mushrooms. And I didn't realize we are cooking all together. Tristan is enlisting some of the kids to help him with chopping up some of the uh, fruits and vegetables. And uh, yeah. That was the plan. But Rylan has been saying for days that he is the best tomato cutter in the entire house. So we're going to put that to the test. And yeah. see. We need to record this, dude. This, this is like epic ham cutting right here. That's some impressive ham cutting skills. If you ever need a ham cut, guys, just hit me up. Just hit you up. Huh? Hit up my my separate. Hit up your Instagram. Cut, Why don't you my call ham it out now? Cutting Instagram, <laughs> where all I do is cut cured and uncured ham. Oh. So when we went to go get the ham today for this, ordinarily you want like little cubes. This is like the best that we could do. Uh, we got dinner cut through the deli, and then we just chopped it up into little cubes. Just make do with what you can. To make my hash, you need some potatoes. Now, these red potatoes are getting ready to go bad. In fact, I had to throw half the bag away. So, uh -uh. <laughs> Savannah <laughs> loves to tease dad. During his intro? <laughs> my troll. Okay, so uh, get a bowl of water. Uh, and the reason you do this is while you're cutting your potatoes, you don't want the other potatoes to go brown. Uh, so they're just gonna sit underwater and not burn. Now the thing I love about my hash is it is very uh, reheatable and eatable. So I typically like to make like three or four days worth of hash. Ask Tristan a couple of the questions that we didn't get to ask him during the Q&A the other day. And let's see what he answered. What are your hobbies? My hobbies? Yeah. Um, let's see, I really like motorcycling. Um, I'm into a online game called League of Legends that I've played with my family for going on 12 years now. 
Um, I'm really into thrifting and upcycling furniture. Um, I've got two dogs, so I spend a lot of time with them. I'm really into like dog training. Yeah, just like a lot of urban exploring, like a lot of that stuff, and uh, like almost have my solo surf for skydiving, so I do a lot of like wild stuff, but yeah. And cooking, obviously. On Beyond Crazy. How long have you been riding motorcycles? So it's been on and off for sure. Um, I, I probably put like two or three years on a 250. I had a 250 and then a 300, but like I was always around like groups of friends that always had bikes. So like I, I felt like I was always like given a loaner bike or had someone's second bike or something. So I mean, I will say like all in all though, I, I will say like rider knowledge, like this is the biggest bike I've ever had. And like uh, I've ridden this bike more than I've ridden any other bike. So I'd say like wrap it into like two hard years of riding and like having my own bike. Let's see how you're doing, Savannah. That's the most dainty cutting I've ever seen. I think you're supposed to use two hands. You're doing great though. That's how I would cook because I don't want to touch it. Is that what you're feeling? The max is super focused. You have to be. Oh, here comes the master tomato cutter. No, you can take over. She was not wanting to touch the tomatoes. All right, master tomato cutter. I heard you're the best in the house. Just get in there, start cutting. You are the best cutter in the house for tomatoes. Consistency is key. So keep in mind, I was given zero instruction here. I was I just told, told to cut them. I, told, them. I, was to call, I was told to cut them however I wanted, so. I said cut them the way that you would like them in an omelet. And I wouldn't put them in my omelet, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you shouldn't have cut them. <laughs> I shouldn't have cut them then, you're the right. The instructions were flawed. Krista, next, next question. Do you speak Korean? Enough to serve someone in a Korean restaurant. That is fair. Look at that consistency. Good job. All right, our potatoes have been cut into small, nice bite-sized pieces. I've dried them. This is a clean towel, it's just stained. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna add some olive oil. That's just gonna act as a binder for our seasonings. And the seasonings we're gonna put on is garlic powder. I like a lot of them. Then as you're mixing it, if you realize you need more seasoning, you can add more. How do you realize that? You can't go wrong with seasoning. Well, I, I see some potatoes that have zero on them, so yeah, that's not allowed. What? Everything must have something on it. Okay, did you watch Crazy Pieces before reconnecting? Yes, and it was super sad. Aww. What was sad about? It was just like sad that I was just like, yeah, I'm just like not part of what's going on anymore. Okay, so they sell this thing called, I think it's called Bacon Up, and it's basically bacon fat that's been like filtered and saved so you can cook with it. I don't have any of that currently, so I'm going to use pure tallow. We season with some olive oil, we put some tallow. Now this is, we've been keeping it in the fridge so it lasts longer. Um, it was particulated, but now it's, you know. This is the sound you're, you're looking for. <laughs> Did you hear the sound? I heard the sound. Now you can cook your potatoes other ways. I almost fried today, but it gives it a little bit of a different texture and whatnot. So I love it in the cast iron. That gets the flavor. And I'm trying to impress Tristan and get a 10 out of 10 today. So best I've ever had. <laughs> best he's ever had. I mean, he talked a lot of smack, but he came through. Those tomatoes look really good. Good job. Good job. Oh, I'm yeah. impressed, Island. No, I'm good. Not with that hand. it shouldn't be. <laughs> Anyways, come look at my amazing bacon. Oh my gosh, that does look amazing. That's like perfect. And then I'm also... really picky with the consistency of my bacon and that looks amazing. So, good job. And then we also donated the bacon grease to the hash. You donated it? Yeah. Okay, all the ingredients are put together, so we're gonna have each kid come in and kind of put what they want in their omelet, and then Tristan's gonna make the omelet for them. So you're first, Savannah. Woo! -hoo! You wanna be next, Evie? Yeah. Okay, and then Rylan, they're Wait, lining so up. Wait, so what do I do? Just put it on the plate? Yeah, just put whatever you want in your omelet on your plate, and then give it to Tristan and he'll oh, make I want it. Oh, fruit salad in my omelet. <laughs> Definitely. She wants the fruit salad in her omelet. Oh, Can she do that? <laughs> you got no response. Good. 
no mushrooms in yours? I honestly hate mushrooms. Me too. Is there any techniques to making the perfect omelet? Yes. Don't go crazy with the heat. Keep it low. Um, it's supposed to be baking it. You're folding it on top of each, uh, on top of itself. You should only flip an omelet one time. Small amount of butter or oil, depending on what you're using. Butter's fattest flavor, so I use a lot of butter. So you'll start with whatever proteins you're gonna cook off. You're gonna bring that up. Okay, did you put the one seasoning on yours? I'm gonna do that. The other day, Rylan had some eggs and I tried a bite, and he had this seasoning on it, and it was so good, actually. The money dude. So as a backstory, what's going on right now is I just had a frustrated kitchen moment, and I gave up on the project, and I blamed the pan. So now, Kraz is gonna go in here with the same pan, and he's gonna make it happen out of spite. I am not making it happen out of spite. <laughs> There's no love cooked into this one. It's completely spite based, boy. So you might wait. Make... This is mine. I wanted to fill the so, love, Aaron. So you might have you might have an omelet out of that pan, but zero love. <laughs> I do think it's important to have the right like kitchen tools, and we right now do not have a pan that's like the right pan yeah, right because the one Aaron's cooking on is just kind of like a really cheap one that we got last minute because I threw Aaron's pan away. But we did replace it with a big pan, but they didn't want to cook big omelets in the big pan. Our pan situation right now is a little bit of a disaster, but we're gonna fix that. We're gonna figure it out. Most people, when they cook an omelet, they'll cook it like this. They'll put their toppings in, and some of the egg in the middle is like close to being cooked, but it's a little kind of runny. Crystal doesn't like I don't like all. it like she that. She does not like running at all. So no. we are going to well, get this guy. Tristan was like draining it out the side. And that is one way to do it, yes. I am going to do a flip mechanism or method that hopefully will work. And if I spatula down. The well, that's the second time you dropped it. Hey, don't out him like that. We're not out. It keeps jumping out. the sand, man. Sometimes cooking isn't perfect, and that's OK. There we go. Got it. All right, this is your filling. Here we go. <laughs> Did you want some? And cheese? this cheese. Okay, we didn't quite get it, but I did start cooking my veggies. They are almost done. So those are close. Now I didn't quite make enough potatoes, and in fairness, I've eaten quite a few of them. <laughs> so I'm only gonna probably use about half these veggies and add it to here. All right, so now we've added the veggies, we have the potatoes, I just need to cook down some sausage. And I love the maple sausage. I love the flavor of the maple. I feel like it gives a little bit of sweetness to this dish because there's plenty of salt in there. Um, but yeah, let's get this sausage fired up and then let's get this hash put together. All right, the hash has come together and got it all mixed up. Now the last part, I love sun-dried tomatoes. I don't like them cold because we store them in the fridge. So I throw them in the pan with the, uh, that the sausage was cooked in, warm them up just a little bit and top that on. Now, if you want eggs, you can absolutely cook an egg any way you want and then add it on top of the hash. Obviously, I can't eat eggs, so I don't do that. All right, we're just getting a couple in the pan and we're just gonna give them a little bit of heat, bring them up to temperature so that it's not like this crazy cold thing on top of this nice hot hash. I can't complain. Be glad we're not numb. We're the four.